Hello, I'm Holly Rader. Today we are going to be exploring some basic use of a computer. We are going to start with a Mac laptop, a MacBook Pro, and then later on we will move to a Windows-based laptop. As we get started, if you're familiar with computers with um, either one, you may notice that the Mac desktop looks a bit different than a Windows-based computer. Uh, for instance, everything tends to be kind of upside down or backwards compared to the others. Uh, your Windows menu, your Apple menu starts up here, and you have uh, some of your menu across the top instead of at the bottom. You'll notice the sound a short shortcut to the sound is at the top. Your Wi-Fi is at the top. Bluetooth, your battery life, a search button, of course the time, and at the bottom you have your dock and then your open open windows. First thing that we're going to talk about um, and I know this is very basic, but it is confusing to some if you've not used a laptop before or even maybe a computer. But you, the first thing you need to be able to do, or one of the first things, is to use a mouse. Uh, you might be using an older mouse like this, or you may be using a touch pad mouse uh, like on a laptop. And there are different kinds of those. You may have a single bar, you may have a double bar, or you may have one that has no bar, such as this one. And this is this is what mine looks like on the on the Mac. So let's back out of well, before we completely back out of those. Just a quick little tutorial. On the flat one that's on the laptop, you use this area to move your finger around and that moves the cursor uh, back and forth, up and down. Some of them, they have a bar that's it's flat. It's not separate from the mouse pad or from the touch pad, but there might be a little line here that you have to actually put your finger on to move up and down. Uh, it'll move the whole screen up and down. Some of them, if they have the bottom bar, these are like your left button and your right button on the regular mouse. Uh, if you're clicking on the, you know, if you would click on those. On the single touchpad, uh, like this one that we talked about earlier, you just either Click left or you rest both fingers and then press your right finger down to click right. I know that's kind of confusing. You can play with it a little bit, but you'll actually have both fingers down. Also, in order to scroll up and down on the screen, you can see me toggling that just a bit. You'll rest both fingers on the mouse pad and then move them up and down together. And that's, that's how you'll move up and down the screen. Or sometimes you can click on it sometimes, obviously not in this case, but um, you'll just have to use, you know, figure out how the one that you have worked. But the, uh, the basics of it are that in this area, this is the touch area where you will move your cursor around and then either at the bottom or somewhere you'll have you either click on your left finger or click with your right finger. So moving that out of the way. Next, just a couple of basic things to help with the ease of use of your computer. We talked about the shortcuts up here for the sound, for the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, things like that. But you're also going to want to use either the Finder or 
for this, the system preferences. This is another place you can find your sound and uh, the Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, things like that. But also, if you click on displays, you may have an issue with your screen not being bright enough or being too bright. And this is where you'll go if you need to change that. I know it's just a basic thing, but it's something that a lot of people want to be able to change and aren't quite sure where that is. So again, uh, the system preferences is kind of like the settings where you can change the way your, your screen looks. You can also go into the desktop and screensaver. And this is where you'll change that picture that's on the back, uh, whether it's a photo from the computer or you can go into your photos and use a personal photo for it. But this is where you, you can adjust and personalize the way that your computer looks. Now moving on, another thing with the Mac, we're going to make this larger so that you can see. This is in full screen mode. These are just some computer shortcuts that you may or may not want. Uh, the command C, command X, different things that you can use when you are in a, like in the, not a word, but in a word processing program or something, or um, some of the other programs you can use these on. Now, what I kind of wanted to do is when we get to this point, you may notice that there's no way to get out of it. On a Mac, all you need to do is scroll up to the top and your window will scroll down or your menu will scroll down. Then you can go to the minimize and bring it back into that other screen view. Or you can click the X and be done with it. The next thing we want to talk about is the dock across the bottom. This may be, um, you can add and take away from from this list, and it could be apps that you use often or you know things that you want to keep close. This side are either apps or documents that you have open. Of course, the trash can. Finder is kind of like Internet Explorer from a Windows. You have a menu on this side of where you want to look, or there may be, you know, tags you want to look. And then you can go here or you can search. So when you're looking for a specific program or um, you'll notice mine is on a Memorex, it's a USB that I have plugged into the side of the computer. And so if I have something, an external drive of some sort, that's where I'm going to find that. Um, if I have my phone plugged in or something, it would be under devices. So this is just a, an area to search for specific things. I'm going to close out of that now. The launch pad. The launch pad is where all of your apps are. Moving on from apps, we are going to go to the app store. Maybe. There we go. So you click once on your app store. It will open. Eventually open the app store. You have, um, you're probably familiar with the different types of app stores, whether it's the Google Play Store, the app store. Um, you know, there's, there's different ways to get programming. Sometimes there are third party, third party programming, and this is from Windows or Mac. You know, that's where you go to a website and you may find something on that website that you want to download. Uh, my husband suggested maybe Linux or 
programs, you know, that you may research from that stand, from, from that side instead of going through an app store. But anyway, so as we do this, uh, we're going to go through kind of how it's laid out. You have featured your top charts, your purchased apps, where you can go back and look for things that you've purchased in the past, and updates. Under Featured, they lay out games and apps that they really like, and then Editor's Choice. Top charts, top paid apps, top free apps. So if you want to get a certain app, you can click on it and learn more about it. It will explain what the app does. You can read through that. You can read uh, the reviews. Those are always great when you're looking at a new app. So you can read through reviews. You can watch, sometimes there's a short video or different photo presentations where you can see what this app looks like, what the program, or what you can expect from that program. You can see what that developer, uh, other apps that they have created, maybe you like one by a certain developer and you'd like to stick with them or find out what else they offer so you can look up that as well. And so let's say that we like it, we decide we want to choose it, so we get install app. Okay, so in this case, because my computer is not quite up to date, it can't be installed which is fine. I knew it was going to happen. So we're going to pretend like it did and that we'll say it was pages that we downloaded. Now, if this is something we're going to use a lot, you can left click it and then grab it with your right finger and pull it down into your dock so that you can use it again. Uh, you'll notice that these all start moving around. You can just left click anywhere in the page and that will, or on the screen rather, and that will cause them to quit shaking. So now your page is down here. If you want to open it, of course you can open it up here as well. You just double click on it. If you decide at some point that you don't want it in the dock anymore, remember what I said about resting both fingers, click right. Go to Options and Remove from Dock. And that took that right out. All right, let's see. I think that's about all that we're going to talk about. No, it's not. Sorry about that. Okay, Safari or any of your um, browsers, whatever you want to use. I'm going to do a quick quick run through of that. When you open a Safari page, if you're looking um, or a browser, whatever your browser window, a lot of times you're gonna have shortcuts down here of things that you use um, often. Your search bar, you can either type your um, address that you're looking for So you can straight type in the address and you have faster internet than I do. Hopefully in Chester County, we're going to have good fast internet soon. Um, well, I know some of you do. We still live out in the, um, out in the county and so we're a little bit slower than some of the others. Anyway, you can also just type a search
you'll notice that it went through Google and I'm already signed in, but you would have a sign in option up here if you needed to sign into your um, Gmail or Drive account or you know something with the Google. If you need uh, to open another, you want to save this search, but you want to go back and forth between a couple, you can click the plus. You can drag those back and forth. You can also pull that down and create a second window. Okay, so those are some very basic things. Like I said, I didn't want to go into anything too advanced uh, today. We're just going to hit some of the beginnings to get you get you started. And we'll be back in just a few moments with the Windows-based computer. Thanks.